but did you also have injuries in calisthenics since your start? <laughs> yes, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's because I did everything with not a good form. Welcome, Gorillas, to the fifth episode of the Athlete Insider Podcast by Goronation. My name is Phil, and today we are with a special guest from Greece, Slides, who is, for me, a really, really inspiring athlete because, uh, yeah, he's, you probably know him from his viral videos from Instagram. Maybe you know him from, uh, yeah, you also were as a finalist in Greece Cut Talent, I guess. And uh, yeah, I'm just really, really happy to have you here today and to spend time with you and ask you some stuff about your workout, your life. Welcome, Slides. <laughs> happy to be here, bro. Awesome. So... Um, you're on a birthday party and somebody approaches you and comes towards you and asks you, yeah, man, what do you do? Like, who are you? How do you present yourself to somebody you don't know? I'll tell him my name, that I do calisthenics, right? calisthenics. That's it. Okay. That's and the first thing I'm going to say. The person asks, what is calisthenics? How do you describe it? Yeah, I will tell him, like, you can check my Insta. <laughs> <laughs> I will show him something like that. Okay. Oh, no, I will just tell him that it's like uh, pull-ups and dips with uh, weights. That's what I describe, describe what I do, like, when I say that I'm a champion or something. They say, what, what is this? What is the lifting? I'm just telling them that it's uh, pull-ups, dips, and squats with weights. That's it. Okay. They kind of get the idea, you know. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, you have like a quite special workout type. On the one hand, you do like the uh, the usual, I would say, like weighted calisthenics, uh, weight like uh, street lifting or however you you call it. Um, and on the on the other hand, you do like a lot of crazy stuff. You experiment a lot. Uh, like, how do you put these two together? To be honest, that's the hard part in what I do, because we focus on one thing only, like only pull-ups and dips. And it's much easier to program yourself to progress. But if you put like <laughs> the crazy stuff that I do with rings, with push-ups, with front levels, with skills, and weighted calisthenics too, then it's kind of more complicated. I am doing uh, each week at least one weighted push training, weighted pull training, at least one next day, of course. And then I focus on skills and maybe crazy ideas I can do because I like, maybe I'll be at work and just uh, begin brainstorming about what can I do the next time I go outside or I go train skills and shit. And that's when I, I think about them, I write them down and then I perform. Okay. So like the, I think people would ask themselves, uh, do you really work out how you do in these, uh, these crazy videos where you do crazy neck hangs or like uh, just the, the crazy stuff everybody knows from you? I couldn't hear the question. Is it really your workout when you, when you post these crazy videos? Is it really how you work out or are no. these just tests? No, or? no. I will not just, um, I have some days which are just for fun, just for crazy skills. Like I go and do two skills that I post alongside with other crazy stuff that I may do on that day. But that comes of course with a proper warm up, proper, and maybe I can even do a workout. And then after my workout, I will do the crazy stuff. That's how it most of the time goes. Okay. So what does your your normal training look like? I guess it's it's weighted workout, uh, like weighted training. Yes, the base is the weighted stuff. That's the base, and the secondly, the second hand goes to front levels like skill training, planche, and, and the skill I want to focus at the moment. Okay. But right now it's the planche because. I have neglected it for years and I want to improve the form. 
And is it difficult for you on the one hand to squat really heavy, like you, you do heavy squats and on the one hand, on the other hand, do the planche? Yes, I can see even the front level, it's much, much harder right, right now. Uh, I can even see it in my two years of like heavy squatting, my legs got bigger. And the front level two years ago was like nothing. <laughs> and now it became much, much harder to hold. So if you are training legs like heavy squats and hypertrophy training, then it's gonna be it's gonna make the skills much much harder. But it's doable, you know. If you want it, you can do it. You can do both. Okay. How tall and heavy are you? Right now I'm at 90 kilos, but I have got uh, some fat which I'm gonna shred, and we'll see. Maybe I will get to. If I get to 87, I will feel like lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> on on what height uh, height are you? How how tall are you? Uh, one meter, one meter and 81 centimeters. Okay, yeah. So even for your height, like really quite heavy for for a kilogram. Yeah, it's, just, it's physics. <laughs> yeah, it's just physics. <laughs> That's true. And how is it possible for you to to maintain such a physique? Like, how is your nutrition? Do you follow a strict plan? <laughs> no, right now I got like uh, two months ago, I was at 92 kilos, I, something like that, maybe even more. But I got like a little chubby. I got uh, lots of fat. Look, I gain fat really, really easy. If I eat like some shit for a week or so, I will see a difference in my body. And even in my... Um, uh, scale and then to shred that I will have to be very very strict like to cut uh, the sugars of course the carbs like to uh, minimize them and what I do to shred mostly is uh, intermediate fasting that helps a lot and I even work out fasting and if I want to shred like fast like I did uh, this month I do also heat workouts uh, well fast then eat one banana and then I continue to my workout so just an That's additional uh, just an additional heat workout in front of your your normal work workout yes 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 okay and that's also is warming me up really good for the work okay and what does your normal day like? Um, like, uh, how is it structured with work, with workout? How do you plan your day? And it goes basically around my work. So at Monday and Tuesday, I work from 2 o'clock until 10 o'clock. And I wake up early in the morning to work out. And then I go to work and like do nothing uh, from, the, from the perspective of the workout. I work on other things, uh, like Instagram, social media ideas. And, shit. and on the other days, like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I work at night shifts. So Wednesday is my best day because I wake up like pretty fresh and I can do anything. But all my PRs are all, mostly on Wednesdays. And then I go to work. And then I wake up pretty beaten up, like feel like I don't want to do anything after the night shift. But still I push through, work out, eat, and then go to work again. So that's basically my... my Crazy. Day. So where do you take the motivation to work out, even like to push through the, the tiredness or uh, like the lack of motivation after after a night shift? Because um, I know what kind of people work in night shifts and it's really, it's exhausting for the body. Um, it's uh, like the people who work there, they really have a hard time sometimes. Um, so how do you push through? How do you still do your workouts at 100%? Yeah. Right now it became a habit, to be honest, to push through, because um, if I don't do it, I will feel uh, really disappointed in myself afterwards. Uh, I want to avoid that feeling at, at all costs. I want to feel disappointed and like I wasted a day in a workout away because I felt mentally weak. That's what I'm telling myself, to be honest. But if you're not mentally weak, you can do it and you will do it. 
And then I apply one rule, the five seconds rule, uh, if the times get tough, which is like you, let's say you are uh, laying on the bed and you don't want to wait to get up and do anything. You just like five, you count from five to one and then just do it. But you count it out loud like five, four, three, two, one, and then just do it. And it helps to it helps your brain to actually take the command and do it at that time. So that's what I do. And then I'm just telling myself that I'm not weak. <laughs> it's easy, it's pretty simple, but that's what I tell myself. And also I have the Instagram followers, which uh, those people depend, kind of depend on me with the messages they send. And I feel like I can't disappoint them. And I think about them at my really worst days, you know, they can help me. But yes, uh, the night shifts, if you know people that work night shifts, you, they will tell you that you wake up beaten up, unmotivated to do anything. Even your body is aching. So it's not a job. It's like sleep deprivation and also sleep, it's a sleep quality is really shitty when you sleep at the day. So it kind of mess, mess you up, but you can do anything if you want to, if you're strong enough mentally. That's what I believe. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, uh, it's not the, the lifestyle of a, that's why I think you're really, really inspiring because, um, you don't, you're not like the typical calisthenics athletes who lives from social media, from personal training a little bit. Um, and like who has a lot of time to work out and to achieve his goals, but you're a person like who works hard, who has like circumstances like the night shift, um, which do don't make it so easy to achieve high, high achievements, but you still do. Like, uh, I just remember your performance at the world of bar heroes, uh, 2018, I guess, uh, where you crushed everything. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You say weak ties, well, but I say know. it's, it was, it's impressive to see you competing and to see your videos. So, um, yeah, it's really inspiring. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. It was really good times. Good memories. Yeah. But the, the five second rule is a good thing. Like, uh, it's, it's a good habit to have. Um, do you like, do you still have sometimes, yeah, do you still have sometimes the lack of motivation and, and think about quitting or never? Uh, I think everyone has those days, like the weekdays, but then I just, uh, maybe at those really, really weak days when I'm unmotivated to do anything, I put some motivational um, speeches at YouTube. There are some that really help. Then I think about uh, people like David Goggins and I even think about my past stuff, the stuff that I have done, which were in, you know, I was in much worse situation. Like in my uh games all bus games when i competed like i <laughs> at all bus games i finished work at six, six o'clock in the morning and then we took a flight with my friend nico uh, at eight o'clock in the at eight or nine o'clock and then the flight was delayed we got in france five hours later i was with no sleep at all Uh, the bus to the, uh, the hotel took three or four hours. So basically, I went from a night shift with no sleep at all. And we, then when we got to sleep at night, uh, we couldn't sleep because there was a noise uh, above, like something like was crashing and we didn't sleep at all. And we have to come, had to compete at 10 o'clock uh, the other day in the morning. So basically, <laughs> I competed and gave it all. I took second place. Well, it wasn't, well, I was awake for like 30 plus hours. Wow. So those, those was really hard times. And I remember those times what I got through and what, how I pushed myself. And then everything passes. You, know? I think you can do it. So I think everyone has some times to recall when he pushed himself to the limit. And that is a proof that you can do it again. Every day. Wow. 
I would be interested in how did you get, like, how did you become this person? What, what kind of past did you have to, to have this self-discipline, to have, have this motivation? I can't, uh, in short, I hit the bottom and then everything was upwards, was going upwards from that point because it was like the lowest in my life. I had depression for two years. I was uh, alcoholic for two years. I was smoking. I was doing uh, like lots of stuff. I was partying, raving, and stuff like that. And to be honest, I had no no purpose. I was just just living, just breathing, like lots of people do. And that kind of guided to depression, along with uh, some family issues, some economy issues. I had no job then, no work. I had no goals. I had broke up with my girlfriend. I was an alcoholic. And everything was kind of shit. I couldn't even imagine myself uh, smiling sober. <laughs> yeah, that was some low points. And I got really fat because of the alcohol, you know. My health was shit. I was couldn't uh, take the stairs without getting out of breath because of the smoking, because I smoked like two packs a day, one and a half pack, along with drinking. So I didn't do anything. I was just waking up. When I, work, when I woke up, the only thing I was looking forward to on those days was to how to drink again, to smile again a little bit. So when you have no purpose in life, everything feels like empty like with no purpose. And then one day I just freaked out with myself. I didn't like what I saw, what I was doing with my life. And I, I quit at the same time the smoking. I quit at the same time the drinking while all my friends was, I was still smoking to be honest. And it was really hard. And I quit the eating excessively, like anything I wanted. So I quit <laughs> three things. Like at the same time, it was really hard, but working out every day, that, that helped me. That was a salvation because working out, I kind of took the place of everything, that shit. Like took the place for alcohol, of alcohol, of nicotine, of everything. So it kind of saved me. And wow. I think that it have saved many people. Wow, crazy. And how did you start to work out? Like, uh, where did you get the input from and how did you start? Mm, to be honest, I started with rugby. Where some of my friends discovered that in Greece we have a rugby league. And I went to rugby. And rugby. I thought, yeah, it's rugby. Uh, just because I liked the violence, I was still fighting a lot <laughs> in the past for those days. I was kind of wild was doing crazy, crazy shit. Like I even got up in the Parthenon one day. That's another story. Mm -hmm. So uh, I discovered rugby. I was playing rugby and then I was still smoking and still, still drinking. That didn't help me a lot, to be honest. I just liked the tackles, tackling people. And then I discovered the athletics. It's um, it's something like a weight, something like CrossFit, but it's what you can do at home. It has like 15 weeks of, I saw some transformation on YouTube and started doing it. It was hard, but it helped a lot. And then I discovered with a friend of mine, Eric, uh, calisthenics. And that was it. We were hooked at the first glance of it. Yeah, the first videos we saw, we want to do everything, we want to do, learn everything. And that's why I, how I started working out. Yeah, the first trainings were, the first year of my trainings were at home, basically. So it was like just me, my computer for music, and that's it, and the workout. So it was, that was the hardest year, the first year, because I was doing everything by myself. It took Tons of mental of willpower. It was really, really hard to even start working out at those days. But I pushed through every, each and single day. And 
got where I am today. Wow. So it's uh, so like um, you for rugby, where did you get the fitness fitness to start with rugby? Uh, it was nothing to be honest. It was just running and it was just a start, but I it wasn't hooked so much. Okay. Uh, when I was going to rugby, I was doing calisthenics at the same time. After balls, I was doing calisthenics. And then I left rugby because in rugby you hit a lot and it causes you many, many injuries. And I left rugby because of the injuries, because I didn't want to stall my calisthenics progress. Okay. And then Freeletics is like high intensity workouts without, without weights, a lot of reps, uh, a lot of like... Yes, yeah. Close. yeah. And um, then the, this, I, I think it's interesting to do the switch from high intensity workout like Freeletics to weighted. Like, uh, did you start out with weighted directly uh, at home with weight vests or something? Or was it no, first was body weight? I was doing body weight at first. But I was doing everything with uh, not a good form. Everything was half reps, to be honest. But I got some strength. And then I just I never saw anything from other people, to be honest. I wasn't watching uh, even YouTube videos because I was thinking that I got it. I, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I was uh, just taking dumbbells. And putting them like in my heavy bag or, or my backpack or I was just holding them and do squats and do pull-ups and do dips and uh, things like that. Yeah, but then still I was doing everything with bad form at that time, even weighted stuff. But that's how I began. Okay. And since then, what was your biggest uh, success in your career? Hmm. My biggest success. Like in my championships or overall, what I believe is my biggest success. You can share both, like your biggest competition, but also your personal biggest success. My biggest competition might be FIBO because at the time I even was injured and I was still after night shifts and hadn't prepared really well. But I remember that sometimes at FIBO, I failed two times a dip and I was and I failed the chin up and I was really disappointed. I was like it took really a lot of mental strength to get over those mini losses. Like, you know, I felt like I lost on those reps. And it took a lot of uh, willpower to get over those losses at that time to focus and to focus on the pistol squat because I knew that I had a really strong pistol squat. And I needed to focus on that. So I put everything aside, kind of, and focused on the pistol squat. And then when I did I did one, the weight dropped on my finger. Yeah. And they fucked me up. But still I put my shit together and went for it, went for it. Basically I did a PR there of sixty kilos. And it didn't count because I didn't do a dead stop at the bottom. So I had to do my PR, which I have never done before in my life for a second time. But I still did it and <laughs> it paid off. Wow. So FIBO is my, my biggest one because I had to battle with myself yeah. at the competition a lot. And the second one is the first uh, win here in Greece because it was for my grandfather who had passed away and I wanted to dedicate it to him. And my biggest win overall, I believe, is the biggest achievement is the messages I get from people that have been motivated by me and have changed their lives because of maybe something I said or because of some videos they saw. That's the biggest win, the biggest achievement to this day. Yeah. Like I can totally imagine, even with your story, because you also also shared parts of your story on Instagram, uh, that you inspire people who are really also at the bottom uh, of their lives and 
get out because they mm -hmm. see there is uh, Sleetis, there is Argenios uh, who, who did it as well. So I can do it as well, maybe. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's it, exactly. Okay, and um, yeah, like I can imagine you also get a lot of messages. Uh, how do I progress faster? How do I begin with calisthenics? Um, what is your advice to someone, someone being at the, at the beginning of his calisthenics career? Um, how, how can he progress and what should he think of? He should just focus on the basics in the beginning. That's the base, that's why they call, we call them basics. You should focus on the basic strength. Pull-ups, dips, push-ups, squats, don't neglect the legs, and core strength. That's it. And they can focus after they get some uh, decent amount of push-ups. They have some strong, some stronger shoulders. They can focus on handstands too. That's the beginning. The beginners must aim for at least 10 perfect form pull-ups, 15 dips, uh, 20 push-ups, I would say. Let's say 15 and 20, 25 squats, and uh, maybe eight to 10 knee raises, knees to chest. That's it so for the beginners, aim for that. Okay. And um, like, I would be interested. What what is your uh, the the di most difficult move you've ever learned? The most difficult. Must be the. I haven't learned it yet because I can I can do a perfect form full plants, but I believe the plants is the hardest one to coordinate the strength the. Uh, nervous system, it's a more complicated move than everyone thinks because lots of people do, do it with uh, not proper form. So, my, but the most difficult, which I have learned, hmm, I don't know, to be honest. If, even the squat is difficult, the back squat, because it needs a lots of, a lots of work and proper technique. I would say, The thing is not. Some of the variations of my phone level were really hard to begin with. Okay, and then. The plants, let's see the plants. The plants the plant. is the most difficult. But I haven't yeah. learned it yet perfectly, so I can say that I've got it. But the straddle planche, you're quite, quite secure in it, right? Yes, I was. I could hold it like for seven seconds straight, but I don't like the form. I, okay. I don't, this this plant is it's really complicated. Okay, then let's let's say uh, let's take the uh, your your signature move the the front lever with the rings, like somebody who wants to to yes. learn this move. How does he begin with it? Uh, there's lots of tries. <laughs> That's how you <laughs> how you learn. You can do anything else. You just focus on balancing the ring on the ball. Just put the fear aside. To believe that you can do it. The first thing is to believe that you can do it. Because when I first did it, I had, haven't seen anyone do it. So it's kind of hard, kind of hard to believe that it was achievable. Especially I remember the two rings from level. Well, no one has ever done it. That haven't even tried it, thought about it. And I was at the park, I was thinking like, let's, let's see if it's possible. My friends uh, who will be behind me was like, no, what the fuck? <laughs> That's no, no, you can you can't do it. I was like, when the first tried it, I was like, no, what the fuck? That's that's unachievable. And then I thought to myself, like, no, you said that with the uh, one ring, so let's do it. I was like trying, 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 and I found a way. And I did it with shitty form, with no, I did like one milliseconds hold. That gives you the power to believe that you can do it. You can just work on it, work on it, work on it, and you achieve it in the end. So that's how they can approach the normal ring. Just find the right place of the ring, the balance, the right place of the wrists, because you, you play with your wrists a lot. And just go for it. Go for tries. You won't, it won't hurt at all. Even if you fall, it's not a big issue. 
Okay, and and you talked about injuries in in rugby, um, but did you also have injuries in calisthenics since uh, since your start? <laughs> yes, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, and that's because I did everything with not a good form, but I did all those, those mistakes, and right now. I know what I should avoid, what I should do. So, should do. so those mistakes were like a lesson, which I will teach to people, so they won't go through those, like I did. And back in the day, we didn't have any, you know, someone to tell us things like things to avoid. Like, like now, there's tons of information out in YouTube, in Instagram, everywhere that people can search and see what they should do, what they shouldn't do. Back in the day, even the best ones, the best athletes was doing like Maltese and everything with in the shitty form and we were all clapping like, wow, what are they doing? So the sport has progressed and the information that is out there is really rich now. People can learn everything from the internet only. From Even if they talk to a guy and he gives them some tips, on even a personal program, he can progress much, much faster than I did and the people of that era did because they didn't have that information. <laughs> uh, what was your question again? Because I got a little bit lost. <laughs> I asked about your injuries. Like, did you have yeah, some injuries? injuries? Yes. And because of those mistakes, I got like tons of injuries. I got tendinitis, uh, tennis elbow. I got my wrists fucked up like really badly, especially when I did one dip and I hold them track and I still have like a little bit. You can see it's fucked up basically. It's why I couldn't do even push up for like eight months. I got, uh, I fucked up my shoulders because I did the pull ups uh, with. Weighted pull-ups. I was progressing with pull-ups really, really fast in the past. It was my strongest ones, to be honest. I got, uh, three years ago, I got 70 kilos of pull-up easily. But I was doing them with not a good form. I was doing them dead hang without uh, scapula retraction. And basically, I fucked up my shoulders. And I was I was also doing uh, without warm up uh, one arm pull ups because I got strong, and that fucked up my shoulders too. I did one arm chin ups, and basically that's how I fucked up my shoulders and my pull ups went to hell from that moment. So I also I had broken many bones in the past, which plays a role too. Biceps, I have told, told my bicep uh, live at the Eagles Got Talent and still continue the show. Oh. And um, I have many, many injuries. <laughs> I can't even remember them all. Okay. But I get through them. Okay. And now in the past year, I haven't got any serious ones because right now I know what I'm doing. Know what to do, know what not, not to do. And what are the mistakes, like when you say now you know what to do, what are the mistakes that uh, beginners in calisthenics do, often, uh, mm -hmm. like often do? Uh, the biggest mistake I see is they are not doing the proper warm-up. Basically, some of the guys, the beginners, they don't even, they do no warm-up at all. They just start heavy. That was what I was doing. I was doing the same. Also, they have lack of mobility in many Lack of mobility for many exercises, including given pull-ups, constant push-ups, like dips, like everything. And they continue and do, they proceed to do those complicated moves. Because they think they think they're simple. They add some weight too, and that's how they get injured much, much quicker. Even if they don't realize it now, like if they feel uh, all right, Mm, like they have no pain at all. That's the why they are going to end workout. They have warm up, warm up. Eventually, uh, they will pay the price, like all of us did 
we did the same mistake. So that's the biggest mistake everyone does. No warm up. Okay. Okay, nice. Um, what is easier for you to gain weight or to lose weight? <laughs> it's easier to gain fat. <laughs> <laughs> it's ultra easy for me. <laughs> okay. So what I, we already talked about how to sh how you shred like uh, doing doing a hit workout in front of uh, your normal workout with a with a banana or with uh, sh some sugar in between but uh, in general what are your uh, what is your advice to lose fat or to shred let's just uh, understand how it works so when you consume uh, more calories than you burn you gain fat If you mm -hmm. consume less calories than you burn each day, you lose fat. Uh, that's easy. That's, that's the process. The process. Uh, they have to understand that at first, and they have to. Afterwards, they have to see the diet. Like you, uh, what I was doing all these years, to be honest, it was really simple, but it worked for me. I was only focusing on my protein intake. I was only eating food uh, which is rich in protein. And I was focusing to achieve to eat each day at least 180 grams of protein. So I was choosing food like uh, chicken. Uh, I was kind of measuring how many grams it is. Then I saw how many protein are in, is in chicken and shit. And that's how I, I I was eating every day. And still to this day, to be honest, I am doing kind of the same thing. I'm focusing only on my protein intake. And of course, I'm not eating chips and uh, chocolates and everything. I'm, I'm only trying to eat uh, food which is rich in protein, alongside with carbs like rice, maybe some pasta, and that's it. So I focus to get to eat at least uh, at least two grams of protein of my each body kilogram of body weight. So if I'm 90 kilos, I'm eating each day at least 180 grams of protein. And once I reach that point, I stopped eating at all. That's it. That's yeah. how I was doing it all these years. And it worked. Wow. So how often per per month you eat uh, chocolate or something sweet? Mm. This past, uh, those past months I was eating like every week at least. Three times a week. Three That's why I gained fat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And now... I haven't ate, uh, when I want something sweet, uh, I was either eating something from Prozis, which has zero, like 50 calories, which is really, which is nothing heavy. And I was eating for a month only fruits if I want something sweet, like a banana or an apple, or something like that. Okay. I didn't even need, have the need for chocolate or anything like that. Like the fruits to be so. And for snacks, I have uh, carrots and cucumbers. That's a good snack. <laughs> That's like, mm. wow, okay. Nice. So I have some quick questions with uh, some quick an uh, answers from you before we come to an end of this, uh, this interview. Um, so what do you prefer, pizza or burger? Pizza. Pizza. Are you a dog or a cat person? What do you prefer? Uh, dog, but uh, recently I am lo I'm in love with cats too. Okay. So, both. <laughs> yeah, both, both of them. I love them both. Uh, what was your best uh, holiday location until now? Hmm. Uh, from the point of memories, maybe Skiathos, Greek island. Okay. Um, yeah, what is your dream job? Like, uh, what is your maybe goal for the next five to ten years? Uh, to work from home at my PC with people for like four hours and then focus on my daily life, like workouts and stuff. Okay. have a passive income and to communicate and work with people okay. and like in personal training and stuff you know. yeah do you have a favorite calisthenics athlete 
to be honest, no, not, not one. I, I haven't got anyone who is my favorite. I don't even have had motivation. Anymore. I admire lots of athletes. And I, each athlete has something uh, special to give. I have some athletes in my mind which I see are like, wow, his dip is really great. I see others like, wow, his pull-up is really great. I see others like, wow, his plunge is great. I see others like, uh, his squat is great. He's even doing plunge, you know. So it's, I take something a little bit from each up. There are many great athletes. Great athletes. Okay. What was the best calisthenics event you've ever been at? Hmm. Must be Cali Games and FIBO. Okay. And the last question, what do you prefer, statics or weighted? <laughs> That's a hard one. <laughs> I enjoy both, but... I enjoy both a lot, but statics and statics I can get more creative. So maybe maybe statics a little bit more because I can get more and more creative. In that. Okay, perfect. So um, last question for you: How do how can people get in touch for you? Maybe for uh, like coaching, maybe just for workout advice. How can they reach you and talk to you? I'm working on that, to be honest. Even when I'm at work, I'm focusing on that. I have already made some moves. And they can talk, contact me on Instagram or with my, on my email, which I'm going to see much more, much, much more frequently than my Instagram because my DMs are like flooded each day. I get tons, tons of messages and it's really hard to see them all and answer them all. Perfect. So, Sledis, thanks a lot for your time. Thanks uh, for being here. Thanks for sharing your <laughs> advice, your story. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy that you, you were here. Uh, just a short uh, hint for the viewers before you can end uh, the, the episode and say uh, whatever you want at the end. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for watching until the end. I really, really appreciate it uh, because these are some long interviews, but I guess it's really valuable input. Thanks uh, for Sleedings for being here. Uh, yeah, put your Thank questions. You. Put your questions in, into the comments if you have any other questions. Um, Sleedings. Uh, maybe we will do a second episode with them and also comment your uh, the next workout uh, the next in interview guest sorry the next interview guest you're wishing so yeah you can end the episode thanks for being here and thanks everyone thanks a lot my friend we'll talk again we'll be in the same touch <laughs>